shooting for 10 because this is my 10th anniversary of that, coming to this. That's right. That's what I like to hear. 10 years you've been coming here eating these pancakes. 41,000 Minnesotans applied for permits to carry last year. That's a stark decline from the year before. And you just said that you just went for a seven mile run. Yep, just got back. It's, it's gorgeous out this morning. I ran along the boardwalk there on Lake Superior. I love Duluth. It's like my second home. No big deal. You just ran seven miles this morning <laughs> before an interview. That's great. It's been nearly two years since the deadly blast, and now the life of the accused 21-year-old suspect is at stake. Dana, typically a coin flip can be the deciding factor for how a game's going to start or where you're going to go to dinner. And we should whip out our shorts and t-shirts, huh? Is that what happens? I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go running outside. Sun's out, guns out. Sun's out, guns out. Just, just let them fly. That's how it's going to happen. Right. <laughs> Let's give this a shot, shall we? Here we go. Let's see if I can do this. I flipped it! Right. I flipped Perfect. it! Last night's cold weather didn't stop Northlanders from hitting the stores to devour good deals. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of people cheering on all of the racers that are coming through. This is fantastic. I brought in my blanket Blank that I have had. Blanket. Bla yeah, let's see. Let's look, look at this, this. thing. <laughs> it's not a blanket. This looks like <laughs> something that Captain Jack Sparrow would wear. I know. They're both individually hard workers, but together they push each other. Two men there you go. help each other accomplish goals in their world of flips and turns. When I was eight years old, I had skinny legs and skinny arms. I couldn't hold myself. Both starting at a young age and going until they can't anymore. So you keep on getting older and older each year, and. If you can still do it at a decent pace and level, then you might as well keep doing it. After over 20 years of training together, Don't give up. You can do it. Oh, come on, Lake. They have learned what pumps the other one up. No. He sees me and I see him, and there's things that he does that I can't do, and there's things that he doesn't do that I can do, so it's, it's that thing. So this is going to stay on my stomach the whole time. One, two, three. Special Olympics has given these two men the opportunity to showcase their talents. It's just such a joy to watch them challenge others around them, challenge themselves, and um, be here every day wanting to work out. It builds confidence, they set goals, they achieve goals. Seeing the pride that happens when they achieve their goals is amazing. Krista Almquist, who coaches the two Shans, makes sure every time we joke around a lot. Laughter is a part of the practice. <laughs> they're fun, they're carefree, and so it makes my job as a coach really easy. Sometimes it takes a little more motivation than other days. You just sit there and look good, okay? <laughs> and sometimes when I come here, I take a nap and get myself, get moving. Can't leave me hanging. I like trying to push him, I try to make him do more than he wants, but he doesn't, but he's a good boy. Come on, toes on, you got it. For Sean Clund, Special Olympics was a place for him to come out of his shell. I was a person that would just hide in a corner and be afraid of everything from things that happened, and they got me to open up and trust people. <sighs> and for the other Sean, it was a way to keep him focused. At one point, little Sean was all over the gym. He wasn't focused. You could hardly get him to concentrate on an event and now he's a leader in the gym. One thing about special gymnastics is for certain. These boys now have the drive and ambition to succeed. There's moments where they accomplish something, maybe not big, something little, but something they've been working and working on. And it's, it's not just joyful, it's tearful as well. I always do gymnastics until I'm not able to ever. And this team of two gymnasts will continue to give each other the pep talks they Good. need to continue. Push hard against the bar. Thank you for your hard work. And thank you for helping me for lifting. He's always there to pat him on the back, tell him it was a good job done. And help each other they will, until the end. If you take your time to help out people, you know, that's, that's a great thing to do. Rather than Special Olympics or whatever you do, it's always great to help out other people. 
Spectators were ready and waiting around the fire for the first Bear Grease musher to cross the finish line. Ryan Anderson led his dogs to first place after completing a 319 mile course. And from the beginning, it was once again a close race. Nathan and I were kind of going running together pretty much the whole way as far as run times went. Um, and then just the last couple of runs, I think he kind of, well, I ended up blowing through Sawbill and I guess he chased me out of there. So I don't know if that was in his plan to do or if I got him off his game there or not. Through tough terrain and hilly landscapes. It was just to try to maintain a steady pace throughout the whole race was kind of my plan. And I, I think we kind of accomplished that. The snow did slow us down some, but not that much. Anderson was anxious to keep going. I kind of actually want to turn around and go back to Two Harbors, but the dogs are looking real good. They're happy. Anderson and Schroeder crossed the finish line 20 minutes apart, almost like they did back in 2011, where Anderson again took home the victory. I kind of went out, left Highway 2, and I thought to myself, I'll give the dogs about an hour and I'll try to try to pick them up to race. And they were all raced out, so I just we just coasted in. But the training for these dogs is not over just yet. I'll give the dogs uh, whatever time they need to recoup, but probably a week. And then we'll start training off uh, again real lightly. While Schroeder is getting his dogs ready for the Iditarod in March, Anderson will be getting his pups in gear for the UP200 in Marquette, Michigan. We'll be racing now pretty much every other weekend until the end of March. So. They're going to be some tired dogs come, come April 1st, so they'll need some little R&R. &R. And the one and only Bear Grease is a reminder of the friendly competition between two friends. I have a lot of respect for Nathan's dog team, um, and especially what he did in I Did a Rod last year. And to just be able to compete with them is, is I think, a good accomplishment. If you take a moment and look around you, you might find what one photographer sees every single day. There's all kinds of hidden beautiful places around Duluth. Walk to the water and take it all in. People keep asking me why I keep going back to the same spots all the time, time and again. Because there's no two days alike in a photographer's mind. Each day is a different blend of elements that creates a different picture. The beauty of Duluth has always been here, but social media has brought Duluth into the public eye. People look at it and say, is that really in the Midwest? Dennis O'Hara started his photography career in the 1970s, taking photos for the National Guard. When I was uh, replaced by a computer chip, in the late 80s, then I picked up a regular uh, film camera and started taking pictures of, of scenery in and around Duluth. To him, one place will never get old. Canal Park is a place that always draws you back. He envisions the world around us as a place to make his art come to life. God takes each day and makes a different canvas. And, and that's what I try to capture. Whether it's rain, snow, sun, or clouds, it's always a day for photography. The mix of seasons and wildlife uh, just combines to make it a perfect place to keep a photographer happy for a long time. But it's more than taking a simple photograph. It's an appreciation for nature. Duluth, the parks, the foresight that our forefathers had to create all this green space and the duty we have to protect it. O'Hara preserves that natural beauty one photograph at a time. It's kind of a just a relaxing closeness to God and knowing that he put all this together and I get a chance to look at it. country, 
Just outside of Duluth lies a place where therapy Go ahead, arms. and laughter come together as one to help those facing life challenges find growth and healing through a connection with horses. Good boy! The folks that have some physical limitations, uh, it's, a, it's a good builder for their core strength and their balance. Um, we've got uh, nonverbal clients that work on their speech while they're here. North Country Ride, a nonprofit organization, has been a helping hand since 1982. We celebrated uh, 32 years and it um, just keeps growing every year. We're going to put it way up on his neck. We are here to help people with some kind of life challenge, um, try to overcome that even in a small way, um, using horses to help them get there. And they believe horses can help with more than just the physical needs. Any variety of confidence building, um, learning to respect the other people in the class, and definitely learning respect uh, for the horses. It's all in the rider's tone of voice. Waka. That proves progress is in session. He's delighted. You can tell the way he's just his body language and he's smiling and his speech is happy and he's calm and relaxed. And so um, he's, he's getting great pleasure out of it. What did I say again to make him stop? You say, whoa. When you want. Lars Bettendorf of Duluth has a chromosomal abnormality that has led to some developmental delays. But nothing is stopping him from enjoying his time with his horse, Shiloh. Okay, I'm ready to go again. This is a great opportunity for him to get more comfortable with horses and have a good time and, and get some therapy out of it as well. Learning how to groom. There you go. And saddle up. Now you're going to put this foot in your stirrup. Okay, look at his head. There you go. Nice job. Is only the beginning of what they learn here. I think the size and the generosity of spirit that you see from a horse, it is just so obvious that you can connect with a horse. Um, it, they, they, they have to be gentle with us, and it makes you want to be gentle and kind with them in return. And the gratifying experience is shared amongst all who are a helping hand. Can you pull it a little more? Nice job. And just see how much they enjoy the horses um, and, and what, what they really take away from it. It's, it's really fun to be able to do that for people. You really do gain yourself when you give something to someone else like that. Before I get strapped up and gloves on, he got me a little warmed up, Rocky style. These gloves are heavy right now. <laughs> this workout was ridiculous. Welcome already. to my world. <laughs>